What if I told you there's a new wire antenna on the market that gives 80 meter through 10 meter performance, full resonance, so no tuner required, and it's also adaptable and versatile enough to fit into very small spaces or large spaces, whatever you have to work with in your environment. Let's take a closer look. Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Today, a look at a very special new antenna. This is put out by Aetherwave Antennas. This is Tim N9SAB's antenna company. Tim makes some excellent product. I've had tremendous results running Tim's products over the last few years. I'm out here at field day, and this is going to be my first chance to use his antenna. Now they've nicknamed it the Fleep and the reason it's nicknamed Fleep is because Tim and Philip, KA4KOE, a friend of mine, they collaborated on the design of this antenna. It's very special. I want to show you a little bit about what we're talking about. So here's a look at the component pieces of the Fleep. First off, it is an end-fed antenna. So we've got a, uh, a matching unit right here. Mine has an SO239 connection on it because that's the way I prefer them. Tim will also custom add a BNC connector if that's something you want to add. And connected to this is a radiator which is good for both 20 meters and 10 meters. Now, Tim claims that you don't necessarily need a counterpoise with this, and because it's a resonant antenna, uh, you, you may find that you can get away without one. It's probably a good idea to at least use a line isolator on the coax feed, but this is just true of an end fed in general. So, small lot size, uh, wanting to work the higher bands, this is a tremendous little package unto itself. The next piece is a 40 meter add-on. So this is, this is a linked end fed. And this is the 40 meter radiator and it just links on to the 20 meter radiator that the matching unit is directly connected to. Tim uh, uses a nice bullet connection and uh, has a strain relief built in to the radiator as well. Now integral to this, and, and by the way, sorry, just before I move on from there, this is going to add more length, of course, to the antenna, which is going to take it up to about that 66 foot mark, making it a half wave. Now, when you add it, you, of course, retain the ability to work 20 and 10 meters. It becomes a 40, 20, and 10 meter end fit. Now, next up is a link for 80 meters. If you're going to use this one, what you want to do is plug in the 40 and then plug in the 80 meter. Now, interestingly enough, Tim's thrown a really great wrinkle into this antenna. I say Tim, I mean Tim and Philip. They've 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 done a lot of work on this, and and what they what they found is that an 80 meter antenna typically doesn't radiate well on the higher bands if you're trying to make a multi-band antenna out of it, at least not without the use of a tuner. So what, they, what they've done is they include in the FLEEP a capacitor. And this capacitor goes between the 40 meter link and the 80 meter link. So if you're going to run 80 meters, and by the way that's a full 128 foot antenna I think is what the dimension that, that Tim gave me. This gets added in between that 40 meter and 80 meter. But now what that gives you by adding in this capacitor is pretty much a flat SWR, at least you know below two to one across the vast majority of the 80 meter band and then up through 40 meters, 20 meters, uh, 10 meters, 
it, it, it's amazing. Even, even 15 meters will come into resonance with this one. So you may not need to use an antenna tuner with it. And if you do, it doesn't need to be one of the wide ranging antenna tuners. You could use something like the built in antenna tuner on many rigs. The last component that Tim ships is a ground stake and a lead for it. Now, of course, all the great stuff that I've just told you doesn't matter at all unless it gets you results on the air. I am out here this weekend. I'm going to do a POTA activation here on the Friday night, and I'm also going to do some field day. So my next step, now that I've shown you what the antenna is, is to get it up in the air. Behind me, you can see my pole mount that I use for holding erect fiberglass poles. I have with me this weekend a spider beam, 40 foot, that's 12 meter mast. My intent is to install the antenna as roughly an inverted L. I'm going to run the antenna basically from a stake out here somewhere up to probably about the 30 foot point on the mast and then run it across this field behind me. Uh, this field is more than long enough to accommodate the length and of course on 80 and 40 its low height will mean it will be acting as a near vertical incident skywave antenna which is actually going to be perfect for field day but will also give me the opportunity because the antenna is resonance on 20 uh, and 10 and 15 I should be able to make a lot of contacts on those bands as well. That's going to be an interesting thing to check out. Let me get the antenna up and I'll come back to you. Just before I get this on the air, let's show you the link that Tim puts onto his antennas. So we've got a couple of carabiners here holding the actual radiators together. The link itself is not under any strain as a result of the carabiners being there. They just jump over that carabiner attachment. Very good stuff. I do have a choke, uh, a line isolator on the end here. This is one of Tim's line isolators, uh, just because it's good practice to use with an end-fed antenna. I had a chance to run a POTA activation last night. This is, uh, this is the Saturday of field day, uh, so I was here on the Friday and set up. And I made 68 contacts on my POTA activation running the FT710 at 75 watts and spotty band conditions a lot of QSB fading on the band and that was on 40 meters so that was very promising I'd, why don't we at this point take a look at the analyzer readings that I am getting with this antenna right, as we get started with the measuring, I was discussing this with Tim, and he thought perhaps this antenna would be resonant on 160 meters with a tuner. I tried it last night and didn't get anywhere, so I don't think, I think it was more than 10 to 1 SWR across the band, across 160 meters, so it didn't work in my installation case anyway. All right, let's take a look and see what we get across the 80 meter band. And what you can see here is we have a minimum of 1.03 at 3741, which is pretty much mid-band. And it's below 2 to 1 for a good chunk of the band. So that's really encouraging. Uh, 2 to 1, of course, means is that you don't need to use a tuner. Most radios can accommodate that sort of mismatch quite easily. And there is no... There's no real loss in efficiency that's worth even talking about. All right, let's zip up to 40. Okay, 40 meters. And look at that, the entire band below 2 to 1. Beautiful. No need for a tuner with this one on 40 meters. 20 meters. below 1.5 to 1 across the entire band. Fantastic. 15 meters. Look at that, below 1.5 to 1 
across the entire band. Sweet! 10 meters. All right, so it is below two to one across most of the band, edging up just over two at the high end. Really great results. So what does this testing tell us about the antenna? It's working. It's resonant on the bands we want it to be. Also is below three to one or better on the Wark bands. I did test that out as well. Now, that's all well and good, but does it make contacts? Let's find out. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. I've got protocol with Whiskey 3 and a mic again. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Tango Whiskey Mike. Tango Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Thanks for being for 10 Alpha, Mike Delta Charlie. Copy the 10 Alpha, Mike Delta Charlie. Please copy. 1 Bravo, Oscar November Sierra. Thanks. Whiskey 3, Atlantic Hotel. Field Day Whiskey 1, Hotel Radio. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Mike, you're 1 Alpha WPA. QSL, please copy 1 Bravo, Oscar, November, Sierra. Roger, thanks. 1 Echo Charlie, Tango, thank you, QRZ. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey, Mike. V3CWM, 2 Alpha, South Carolina. QSL, please copy 1 Bravo, Oscar, November, Sierra. Okay, what's the class? 1 Bravo, 1 Bravo. So there you have it, the Aetherwave antennas, Fleep antenna, 80 through 10, linked and fed. An antenna that is incredibly versatile, very adaptable to your situation, and ruggedly made, uh, fairly easy to deploy. It might have taken me a little while, but that was the baking heat, and I was having to trudge through a field uh, full of all kinds of uh, <laughs> nastiness back there. I like this antenna a lot. Th this, this is a game changer, I think. And this will probably become my go-to antenna choice moving forward. I, I think that highly of it. The EnFed design gives it simple installation. You don't have to go to the extreme that I do with it. You know, you can you can work it just as a straight sloper in any either it's 80 meter or it's 40, 20, 10 configurations uh, and, and be on the air literally in minutes. What do you think of the Aetherwave Fleep Tenna? Uh, are, did you like it? What did you not like about it? Tell me about it. Leave a comment below. Really interested in hearing what you have to say about it. Well, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack. Get outdoors and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3TWM.